Hello and welcome to episode 58 of Into the Podcast, Lincoln's very first Pal World podcast. No. Are we not doing that? No, we're oh, not doing that. For fuck's sake. All right, well, we'll talk about other shit then. Ryan! <laughs> Ryan's here. How are you, mate? Yeah, good. <laughs> Got to keep you on track. Stop talking about Pal World. You're obsessed. <laughs> I literally walked in the house and you're playing Pal World. You're balls deep in the pals. All I'm saying is my brother now streaming Pal World. Matt Heaton, big, big fan, big follower. He's been playing today and streaming it. I'm pushing this. Influencers. <laughs> Influencers. Pal World. Woo! It's a phase. <laughs> You'll be over it in two months. I give it two months. It, no, I don't even give it that. A month. Oh, yeah. The, the other day I had to force myself to play it because I wanted to paint Warhammer models. So oh, yeah. I was like, nah, I'd rather do that. And then I ended up playing Rocket League anyway in the end. Well, so. So, yeah. Because okay. Rocket League at the minute have a big um, thingy with Mandalorian. Oh, did so they? I've got myself a Boba Fett fucking Octane. Nice. And a um, Jin Darren fucking Fennec. Nice. Yeah, with like a little Grogu fucking topper and everything. Yeah, that's cool. Max, I didn't spend any real money on it. Yeah. It was points I already had from the game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah take that, no, Max. I spent no real money. <laughs> anyway, we are Sam and Ryan <laughs> into the podcast. So uh, guess what? We have social media. So why don't you go and follow us on it, like the Facebook and the Instagrams and the X, the X, formerly known as Twitter. I don't know what happens on the X. No, I don't. But, Ryan, we've only gone and got ourselves a social media manager, haven't we? Bloody bad time, because we're <laughs> shit at it. <laughs> so, uh, listener and very, very, very good friend of ours, Megan, basically pulled me the other day and was like, you lot are wank at <laughs> ever putting anything on social media. Give me your passwords and I'll do it for a month. Half the time. I, we forget to even put the posters up. And I, oh, say, God, yeah. I say we, I mean me. you, because I don't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you turn up. I turn up, that's it. Yeah, well, so that's most all right. getting from me. I did, I did Twitter for about two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Well, she says, so I'll do it for a month and I'll show you how much you can gain from it. I'm so expecting our listeners to like quadruple. Well, I think we'll do all right. But what I will tell you is you're going to see a month's worth of good social media and then it'll go back to nothing. <laughs> unless Megan agrees to do it all the time for us. Unless we start paying her. <laughs> yeah. And Bear in mind, this is Megan that always buys us food as well. I know, the always gets us snacks. Bless her. <laughs> and she got me personal snacks the other day. Friend snacks. Friend snacks. Not just podcast snacks. Not just podcast snacks. Friend snacks. But we kind of, we, uh, we, we gave each other a little something. So I got her some magic stars. And she got me nice. a ripple and a Ooh. five pack of happy hippos. Work snacks. Work snacks. Because, yeah. you know, it can't always be about the podcast, can it? No, no. It's important to have friends. Exactly. Twitch! Download Twitch! <laughs> follow into the pod on Twitch. I'm trying to follow the script here, but <laughs> keep going, keep going off. <laughs> keep practicing our acting ability. <laughs> Download Twitch because on the 22nd of March. Feb. 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 I did this last time. I have even wrote March. <laughs> <laughs> On the 22nd of Feb, which is in a couple of Thursdays' time, we're going to be doing another live show, aren't we, mate? Yes. Where we're going to talk to you guys about all things that you want to talk about. Pretty much. That's Pretty what we much. did last time. Yep, because we've decided we're not going to bother doing anything. I mean, we don't really plan any episode now, anyway. No. But we're not going to bother. We're just going to turn up and we're just going to go... Hey up, motherfuckers, what do you want to chat about? And you guys are going to go, yo, Sam and Ryan of Into the Podcast, let's talk about cheese. And we'll discuss cheese or some shit. That's pretty much what we do for an episode, isn't yeah, it? Like, like, I do love cheese, though, don't you? Yeah, me too. Which let's favorite talk about cheese, cheese now. Which favourite cheese? Oh, um, you know what? I like mozzarella. Do you? Yeah, because it's, it's... Not it's, the taste, not not like the fullest flavoured cheese. No, but it's, it's quite versatile, isn't it? Because mm. you can have, like, your mozzarella dippers... Or if you have mozzarella like on your pizza, nice and stringy, or in like a wrap or a pitta, yeah, you know, and it's nice as a topper. I think it just is a nice topper, yeah, yeah. Actually, you know yeah. what I mean? Like not lots of it, not like. Do you get blocks of mozzarella? You or get it always... balls, don't you? Yeah, don't it comes in a ball. It comes in a ball in a bag that's full of liquid. And it feels uh, horrible. Really? Oh, yeah. A bit like um, halloumi's like that, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've never got the ball in the bag. Yeah, I have. When um, I've like, made homemade pizzeries. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 No, you know what? Maybe I have done that for homemade pizzas and you just put your little balls on. Yeah, you put yeah. your little balls on, don't they? In the, in yeah. The outwards. Mozzarella. That's a good mm. one. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to stick with mozzarella. Yeah. You know what? I'm a big fan of the Mexicana at the moment. Oh, really? Basically just a cheddar with some kick. Because I love me cheddar, you know, the fucking stronger the better. Mm. I love it. 
having a lot more brie these days as well. Oh, uh, yeah. Having a lot more brie. Just because brie, I avoided it like the plague as a kid because it wasn't just standard cheese. Yeah. So anything yeah. like that, any smelly cheese or anything that wasn't a standard cheddar or red Leicester, I avoided. Mm. And now I'm loving the cheese. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. See, br- brie was always my go-to on, like, if people had, like, a cheese board. Oh, I was, I'm yeah. not a big cheese person either. So growing up, I'd be like, okay, brie's... Like it's like I'm dipping my toe into the cheese yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. It's not as vanilla as like the the cheddar, but it's not. It's as... not Stilton. Yeah, exactly. So it was like a safe bet. Yeah. Um, a Stilton sauce on your steak, though. Oh, oh man! Now we're talking. Yeah. yeah, that's fantastic. You know when we get the little jalapeno poppers? Oh yes. What kind of cheese is that? You know, mm. like little deep fried balls from that the local takeaway at mine and they've got little jalapenos in and just cheese aren't they but i don't know what the cheese is probably i'm assuming probably like a cheddar mozzarella blend yeah okay Okay. you get that in like the big bags don't you and that's probably what they have it's never strong it's never strong cheddar though no it's not so it's because you're shit. relying on the, the, the jalapenos to give it that kick. Which it does. Yeah, except that one time where I ordered from there, there was no jalapenos in there. Fucking and I fucking bastards. messaged you. I was like, when we were drunk last time we ordered these, was there definitely jalapenos in there? <laughs> or was I that drunk that I imagined the jalapenos were in there? was definitely jalapenos. So I remember time, chewing them. Yeah, the second time I was mugged off. No jalapenos in my jalapeno poppers. Wankers, and you expect jalapenos in your jalapeno poppers. That's why I it's ordered It's like getting jalapeno. it and having no poppers. Exactly. There's no pop because the <laughs> pop comes from the jalapenos. Wankers, <laughs> fucking bastards! I have since ordered, and they re- they have reinstated the that the jalapenos in the jalapeno poppers. That's good. Yeah. Speaking of ordering takeaway, fuck, let's let's just ignore what what we're supposed to be. <laughs> we've got our script already. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. So remember when we last did uh, Psycho Sicko Horror Night around here? I do. And remember we that. ordered the worst Chinese of all time ever. Yes. From Papa Frank's. Oh, yes, I do remember that. Awful. And I said, I don't get it because you can order from Papa Frank's or on the same thing, you can get Papa Frank's burgers and wings. And I had that with my friend Chloe and it was banging. So I don't know why this is so shit. We ordered from Papa Frank's burgers and wings. Yeah. Just as wank as when we had it. What? I don't understand. Gone downhill. So that first time I had it, mate, the crisp, the chips were crispy. They were, it was a banging takeaway. It was fucking wank this time round. The like, burger wasn't gourmet. It was uh, just a crappy chicken steak in a bun. It was awful. That's but disappointing. I did get buffalo wings. And other other than the fact that it took two hours to turn up. It's two only, hours, Ryan. It's only five minutes down the road. Five minutes down the road, yeah. Two hours and everything was stone cold. Uh, and I've just remembered I meant to fucking order and get money back for that, but I forgot. Um, yeah, so... Oh, so we, you're not be going there again, not then. Going there, which is a shame because the buffalo wings were quite nice, other than the fact they were stone cold. Nah, you don't want that. You don't want that. No. Um, what was the last takeaway we got from here? What was that burger place? Sin City. Sin City. They were, mm. they were pretty good. We've not ordered that for them for a while. Well, they're they're a bit cheeky, they are, because you know how you get like sister branches of. Um, so I think Frankie's and Benny's do it. Right. On uh, Just Eat or whatever, there's like four or five restaurants that all come through Frankie's and Benny's. Uh, okay. So there's like a dessert one and a wings one and a rib one. Right. But it's all Frankie's and Benny's. Well, <clears throat> that place, yeah. there's a new one that's just opened called Highway 88 or something, like American Burgers, the exact same menu as Sin City. Uh, the okay. exact exact pictures so it's the same thing just trying to rustle up more which is fine because the burgers are banging from there yeah that's what at the end of the day it's all that matters isn't it yeah how the how good the food is yeah i don't care what you know it's masquerading as no just give me my gourmet burger I, i've had one too many takeaways this week though oh no because i had um what did i have so i had that papa frank's then i met up with max and that lot for a board game we had a chippy yeah and i had some in the night before what was it um, can't remember. It was like fucking KFC or something, mm, maybe yeah. something like that. So yeah, I've just been smashing takeaways this week, and it's not been good. No, and yeah, we've eaten quite a lot of rich food th- this weekend. <clears throat> so we went out for Claire and I went out for food on Friday night. Claire booked us Tell a table, me about it. and guess what kind of food this place does? The p- name of the place is Thai Thai. Thai Thai. Yep. Is it Thai? Italian. Oh, okay. <laughs> No, no, it's Thai. <laughs> <laughs> was it good Thai? It was fucking delicious. <laughs> yeah? Oh, yeah. I've, it's, so it's in town, literally five minutes away from us. 
And it's this really weird place. It's sort of like on the main road, but it's, you go in through the doors on the ground floor, but then you go up the stairs. Is that one we tried to get in when well, we was out on the piss? Oh, uh, God, no. No, no, I don't think it was. Was it not? No, we were. It's that down the bottom end of town. Um, but like all the stairs are like beautifully like painted and like got murals all up. And you like, and you know, you get up up to the top of the stairs in this like golden map of like Thailand. Ooh. And then you go in, it's all really decorated really nicely. I've only ever been once before for someone's birthday, but I was very drunk. So, you know, when you kind of can't remember the food, you're like, I think that was good food, but I, can't, yeah, I was yeah, a bit yeah. too drunken, drunken haze. Mm. But yeah, luckily I managed to get in on Friday. It was dead. Got a oh, place to ourselves. It. Food was unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, I've only like, ever had Thai once in my life. Next time you come, we'll have to go there because it, yeah. it was, it's, sensational yeah, top well, tier where was that place that we tried to go when we was pissed before we did karaoke um, it was down an alley and we went in I'm sure was that a Chinese or a oh Takuda that was, was that was uh, Japanese Japanese yeah. yeah just randomly instead of just in, getting down piss alley so it it's was like a, down piss alley but instead we went alley. and got chips from a kebab ass yeah yeah because yeah, yeah, yeah. they wouldn't let us in because there's only like three chairs in there yeah, and probably looked, probably looked at us and thought, not letting these piss heads in. And we were very drunk at that point as well. We did not need a sit-down Japanese meal. What no. we needed was chips from a kebab house and then... And then more drinks. And for me to sing Truly Madly Deeply to yeah. Chesterfield. Because I think if we'd had... It's the sort of time of night where you ha- if you had a big meal like that, the Japanese, you just want to go to bed Bedtime afterwards. then, isn't it? Bedtime. Or yeah. go home, watch a little film, and then fall asleep watching the film. Like, man... Oh yeah, you know what I mean? yeah, I like that. Yeah. Well, last night we had, and this will this will get us back on track. Are you ready for? All this? right, okay. I like this. I like this. I know last, where you go with this. Last night, yep, I made the biggest bowl of chili ever. I mean, like way too much for fucking anybody. Yeah. So put it on quite early. As soon as little and left to go raving with a mum. My six year old went to a rave yesterday. Give it fucking big one. I saw the video. It looks incredible. Louis was there, and. Um, so yeah, when she went, I put it in the slow cooker, a big fuck off chili, and then I did chili dogs with cheese, mm. and then some fucking massive nachos, chili, three layers, cheese, chili, and then all your accompanying, accompanying sauces, your guac and your salsa and your sour yeah, cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three layers of that. Oh, Ooh, nice. And then our friend Sam that come around to watch with us did homemade ice cream sandwiches. So ice just, cream sandwiches? Just two cookies with Ben and Jerry's smashed in the middle of Unbelievable. it. Unbelievable. And we did all that because it was the motherfucking Super Bowl last night. And I stayed up till five o'clock in the morning watching the Super Bowl, getting pissed and eating chili. Uh, sounds great. It was good. The game itself was a very defensive game. Oh, was it? A bit cagey. A bit cagey. So it was okay. Not overly high scoring. Um, so it's the San Francisco 49ers, Kansas City Chiefs. Not the Super Bowl I wanted to see. Because there were some underdogs that got right right the way through. Right. So it's Kansas City who were the winners of last year's Super Bowl versus the 49ers who three years ago, I think, Kansas City beat them in the Super Bowl again. But 49ers have, haven't won a Super Bowl in 30 years. Okay. So though I'm there in my Kansas City jersey, my Patrick Mahomes jersey, mate. Yeah. I want the 49ers to win. Not a big 49ers fan, but I love the underdog. I like okay. to see someone for the well, first you're time. you're a Kansas City fan. I yeah, like, if you have the Kansas City jersey, I like the quarterback. Okay, I so like it's Patrick more of, it's more of a connection to the player. So if the player yeah. gets transferred, I don't know how it works. Moved, so moved. Yeah, will um, you then follow that team probably, that he's with? I probably would. So I have my team, which is the Arizona Cardinals. But because we do um, fantasy football every year, I'm more about players than teams. Okay, yeah, I get so, that. I get that. You know, I will get. I won't get jerseys from. So I've got jerseys for my team. I've got three jerseys for my team, but the jerseys I would normally get would be for the players I like. Right. So it's I got a, an eclectic, um, and then I suppose that's quite nice thing. So you get like yeah, your eclectic mix, and it's not as if you wear any of those jerseys. It's not like we're in America and you wore it, and you you know you're in bloody Kansas City wearing a Arizona Cardinals jersey, and everyone's like fucking yeah. look at this sausage no, roll. No one would say that about Cardinals because they're dog shit. <laughs> All right, they'd just probably laugh at you. Yeah, they would, and threaten, yeah. spit at me. Spit at you, maybe take a piss on you and stuff. But the two big things, mate. Halftime show. Oh, yeah, that's always a big thing. Done by Usher. What? Yep. Absolute bollocks. I feel like Usher's not been big since 2007. No, but Ludacris and Little John was there to give it the whole, yeah, yo. 
Okay. Yep. That's a good impression to be heard. And I was just about, I literally just about to message her to tell her to chuck it on as it started. Um, our boy Posty did the national anthem. Did he? So not the actual O C K N U C. The other one. They've got like two. So it's not the main national anthem. There's a, there's another song that they always do at these big events. I right. Can't okay. remember what it's, I can't remember what it's called. But he did that. Just him, acoustic guitar, giving it big licks. Was it good? It was very good. Nice. And it, I, we we love our post Malone. We do. We do. But so the star of the to... show, MVP. Tay Swizzy, Taylor Swift herself. So she goes out with the Kansas City Chiefs tight end. Yeah. Kelsey. And it's basically just she is shown on every big screen ever at every Kansas City games. So every time Kansas City got the ball or Taylor Swift was on the thing, massive boos around the whole stadium of the Super Bowl. Boo! Wow. People are just fucking bored of seeing Taylor yeah, Swift. Yeah, I bet. It's just a bit games. old news, isn't it? Like, when it's rammed down your throat. Like, yeah, okay, we get it. Taylor Swift goes out with this guy. Yeah. Let's, can we concentrate on the fucking game now? Basically, yeah. So and I get that. Boos. I'd be like that. You know, if, yeah. especially if you went to every game and you're like, oh, sh- sure up now. Because it's, it detract, it does detract away from the actual event. Oh, massively. And I feel like it's probably already runs a risk of that a little bit maybe i could be wrong i don't know you know from an outsider who doesn't know the nfl super bowl yeah for me the super bowl is not about the who wins it's about the halftime show yeah it's about what bloody trailers are shown on at half time because people pay fucking 10 15 million for a two minute seven clip. million for 30 seconds there you go seven million for 30 seconds so that's for me as an outsider who's not interested in the sport that's what the Super Bowl's about. Mm-hmm. And I bet a lot of people are like that. So if you're an actual hardened fan who follows your team all season, get to the Super Bowl and you're like, oh, sure up. Like, this is just, yeah. it's just, it's just noise. It'd just be excess noise. Yeah, of course. Interesting stat though, because we know how the Americans love a stat. And they always do really boring things like the, um, coin flip at the beginning oh, and it's yeah. like oh well kansas city win 78 percent of the games that they lose their coin flip on that's an irrelevant stat yeah we don't need to know that but interesting stat go on on average on super bowl day yep. 1.5 billion chicken wings are eaten that's a f- lot of chicken wings that's a lot of chicken wings and how many chicken wings do you get per chicken oh i don't actually know they've only got two wings so two so that's three billion chickens Three and a half billion, yeah. So dead, dead. <laughs> Three billion dead in one night <laughs> because of the Super Bowl. Wow. Yeah, that's good a good stat. That. Better than the the toying cost. The toying toy, cost. Toy cost. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was good. I got quite drunk, nicely, not pissed, but nicely drunk. I was awake. I feel like you need to pace yourself when it's through the night like that. You have, mate. And I was awake for 23 hours all in all, so I'm glad I took, yeah, little and had me up at six. And I didn't get to bed till 5 a.m. Tried to have a nap during the day, but I couldn't drop. I'm bad at naps. Oh, yeah. So all I did was I bought the, um, I used one of my coins on Audible to get the Dominion Warhammer book. Nice. See where I'm going. Ah, uh, okay. Link, nice link, link, link it into the next thing. I see, I see, I see. So I laid in bed for an hour, hour and a half, had the book on in the background, listened to that with my eyes closed, naked, because I sleep naked. Me too. Yeah, so naked, just under my covers, nice and warm, sort of drifting, but listening to the book. Did that help you fall asleep? Um, no, I didn't fall asleep, but just what? it was just nice to rest. You just rest, rest my eyes. That's just, if you can't sleep, that's just that's, re-energized. That's just as important. Then I got up, went to the shop, bought beer, one energy drink, bish, bash, bosh. There we go. Hey, Ryan, speaking of Warhammer. <laughs> see, Twitch. Good. Oh, wait, no, we did, we did <laughs> that, we did that already. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Warhammer, yes. Hey, Ryan, speaking of Warhammer, back to our script. <laughs> Please tell me more about Warhammer. We went to Warhammer World on Wednesday. We did? Now, I would like to describe this day. I like to describe <laughs> what we planned and what we did. So the plan was, and this plan's been going for weeks. It has been weeks. Was we were going to leave work early. About Who's half we? Past two. You, me, Max. Yeah. Initially. Initially. Um, it was going to be on a Tuesday, but we pushed it back because Ed then wanted to get into it. Yep. So Ed was joining us. So we're going to leave about half past two, get there, bimble around the exhibition, have a lovely little look in there. 
Ed had turned up at that point, yep. say to them, hey, we would love to know how to play this game. Will you show us on one of your tabletops that you have set up to teach people? Yes, of course, young men, I can show you that. Pew, 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 fight, 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 roll this dice. Mm. Then we go, thank you, young sir. Let's go to Bugman's Bar for some tater tots and a Bugman's beer. And, and yeah, yeah. Sit down. Nom, 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 nom. Nom, nom, nom. Sup, sup, sup. Happy days. Now, it's shutting shortly. Let's go and spend all of our money ever on Warhammer and leave. A great so, plan. Great, great plan. plan. Flawless plan. Flawless. So what actually happened was you and me sat in your office because I got to sit with you in mm-hmm. Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Tuesday. Oh, I'll come in to work tomorrow. Oh, nice. Yeah, because she's not in, is she? I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, fuck it. I'll come in. I was wondering where to work from tomorrow, but may as well do it from <laughs> there. Uh, so yeah, we sat there, packed down. Where's Max? Max is in a meeting. Mm. Max ain't come back from his meeting. Max is oh, Time's more a ticking. and more mardy, getting more and more mardy. And it's about quarter past three by the time we're walking out. We should have already been there. I, I did say at what point is it okay to just say, fuck Max, I don't care anymore. Maybe we should put that out to the listeners. At what point? We're supposed to leave it off to what time was expe- acceptable to say, Fuck you, Max. We go in. We go in. But at the same time as well, where we work, we can't have our phones on us. So it's not like we can just text him saying, we've gone, meet us there. Because he wouldn't have got that till he left. And then he could have ended up waiting around looking for us inside or whatever. Anyway, we could have emailed him, I guess. But we waited for him. Then we finally got there, blah, blah, blah. We go inside, we bimble around, we have a look, we wait for Ed, because at this point we're like, we can't do the exhibition. We're not going to fit all this in. No, because learning cause to the, play and take the tots are more important. Yeah, because the exhibition... Big, big lots of displays. Apparently, I, I think I've done it once when I was a kid. Um, I've got a massive Lord of the Rings display on at the moment. Limited time as well, so we need to see that before it goes. But the guy said, oh, you, you can rush around in 20 minutes, but you can take up to like a couple of hours if you really wanted to. So we don't want to rush it. But yeah, priority, learning. And pew, eating. pew, pew. Die, die, die. Roll, roll, roll. Yeah. And, and then, then nom, 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 nom. nom, nom. Slurp, 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 slurp. Yeah. And... Ching ching, ching ching, ching things. ching. Yeah, that's yeah, that, yeah, I get. Yeah. So we wait for Ed to turn up. And then everyone's fannying about, looking at stuff, and uh, we finally get because I think Ed wanted to ask a question about something. So or whatever, or Max did or something like that. So we finally get this bloke to come over. Yeah, and he shows us this guy's the nerdiest guy on earth. Instead of just being like, "Oh, so guys, this is what these stats mean. This is how many dice you roll. This is how much you can move." This guy turns up, may as well have been wearing a wizard hat and a cape, <laughs> and was like, "In the land of Sigma, we have the Night Arcanum," and we're like, "We don't care. Just show us how to roll dice." Yeah. Then he kind of went through a bit of that, and I, bless him, he was all right. He was, he was very, okay. I feel he was like he, very nerdy. I feel like he didn't actually know that much. No. Like, I feel like he he knew the basics. I didn't feel like he was an expert. Yeah. I don't know. That was just the impression I got. Because yeah. when we asked him questions, he seemed to get a little bit flummoxed. He, and he was just sort of like, oh, you do what you want. Maybe he's just not used to cool kids like us talking to him. Yeah, well, you thought we'd be the smartest dressed people there. Or Max did, because Max was wearing, I we came straight from work, and Max was wearing a blazer a blazer, and, and a shirt and tie. And he was not. And he was not. There were oh people my God. fucking waistcoated. And... Warhammer World has the most eclectic people I've ever seen. You mm. think this is fat, sweaty nerdville. No. No. There were some hotties in there. Really was. Ma- male and female. Yeah. Some very smartly dressed people. Then you go into the big room where people play and that's full of fat, sweaty nerds. But So that's where I hung out. But, <laughs> but yeah. No, Sam, very... you're not fat and sweaty and nerdy. Thank you, mate. <laughs> well done. So, yeah, it was actually quite interesting to sort of see all the different people that were in there. And they were all buying as well. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, we did that. And I'm looking. I'm going, Max, we need to hurry up, mate, because it's like five past five now. And it shuts at six. And we need to eat and blah, blah, blah. So, we run. But it stops at about quarter past five. So, I run into Bugman's Bar. And I'm like, yo, bro, you still doing food? No, mate, it shuts at five. So, now, no exhibition. No. It took way too bloody long with the game. And no tater tots. And I'm starving. So I'm getting a bit hangry now. Yeah. Getting a bit pissed off. Yeah. But doesn't matter. We've all promised ourselves that we're going to spend money. And I don't feel bad when I spend a load of money when everyone else spends a load of money. That's it. It's justified. So I first grab what I need. Yeah. And then I go to the till. Because I'm like, there's no point all of us queuing up. I go and pay. But obviously I was in a spending mood. So I'm walking past. And I'm like, oh, a holder for to help me paint. I'll buy that when you can literally just 
fucking hold, blue, blue tack it to a shot glass or hold it. Or just hold it. Yeah. That's what I do. I yeah, just exactly. hold it in one hand. <laughs> no, and then, oh, dice that are twice the price of anywhere else. I'll buy them. Yep. Oh, a coin that just said Warhammer <laughs> on it. I'll buy that. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I still didn't spend that much money, really. No, because um, you can spend thousands in there oh, if you God, want yeah. to. I think I spent 100 and, I think it was 137 I yeah. spent all in all. Yeah. On it, and that, that has sorted me now. I don't need anything else. Yeah. Um, and then Max bought his, and I'm like, oh, cool, Ed. And he's like, nah, I bought mine on eBay. And I'm like, oh, okay, Ryan. Mm. Oh, I don't know. I like this one. I like that one. I Just pick one, and then let's pay for it. Now nah, I'm not going to bother. What do you mean you're not going to bother, Ryan? I'm just not going to bother. I could have fucking thrown you out the window. <laughs> it's like, but now I feel worse for spending a load of money because no one else is spending money. But Max, you spent way too much. Yeah, Max, you're spending too much money on this hobby. <laughs> Stop spending money on it. And then uh, you buy more Warhammer. Buy more Warhammer. Let's go to Warhammer one next week. And, yeah, uh, right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you didn't buy anything. And I was just like, for fuck's sake, we come here to do all this shit and we've done none of it. And then we got out and there was a fucking smash up on the road. Oh, God, yeah. And, and what? The... So we had to go across the road. To Literally go to across guys. the road, but it's like across a like an A road or something. Yeah, isn't so it? you have to kind of go up around a roundabout and back on yourself. Yeah. Which would take a couple of minutes. Yeah. I put it on the sat nav because I always miss the turn in 20 something minutes because there's a smash up on this road. Oh, God. Like, and it, that was going up as well. Yes, exactly. So I'm like, fuck. So we end up ditching the cars, don't we, on the side of the road? Yeah. Going over a bridge, walking there, eating. I'm like, right, if we just walk, we take our time eating. By the time we get back, everything should have calmed down. Nope. You lot bimbled off the other way home. I got stuck on that road, which was a mile worth of road for 40 minutes. 40 minutes to get a mile. You didn't buy it. I had no fucking tater tots, no exhibition. And fuckhead. <laughs> he did nothing, but I've been mad at him for some reason as well. <laughs> I had a great time. I really enjoyed my I love you, Ed. I really enjoyed my burger from Five Guys. It was a good burger, wasn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. I haven't had Five Guys for years. Lots of chips. Lots of chips. I only ordered a small chips and the bag was full of chips. Yeah, they do that. They do do that. So uh, did you have a good time? I had a great time. <laughs> I had a great time. I'm disappointed that we didn't get the tater tots yeah. because it's a running saga for the tater tots uh-huh. because the last three times I've gone there, first time <laughs> I didn't even know what the tater tots, I didn't even know what tater tots were really, no. but Drew, Drew Franklin Music, when I went with him in November, he ordered tater tots. I was like, oh my God, what the fuck are they? They're mag- like they're magical and majestic. I'm definitely going to get them next time. Forgot to order them when we we went first time yep. and you got them. And then this time, I was definitely, definitely going to get them. 100% remembered. And it's all you spoke about. You even said, I'm not bothered about Warhammer. I want tater tots. Yeah, I know. I and mean, we didn't get that. Fuck, man. We're just going to have to go again. Well, yeah, we are. But then, also, you're in fucking big trouble, youth. You More so me- than the tater tots. Yeah, on Friday... I'm sat at home working, definitely working, working extremely hard. Yeah. And you messaged me saying, come meet me at Warhammer World. I'm like, I can't. Got pick up <laughs> oh, yeah. And you're like, yeah, but if you leave now and I leave now, we could get there, grab something to eat, and you can be home to pick Lillian up for six. And mm. I'm like, mm. I'm so I'm very tempted to do it. It took all my might to say, no, don't travel an hour and 15 minutes up the road to get to Warhammer <laughs> World for half an hour to come back again. Don't do it. I was working. I was, I was working my little... It doesn't uh, take my, much, does like- it? <laughs> So you said, well, why don't we go tomorrow? That'd be really good fun. Uh, you've got Little and bring her along and, you know, Claire can come, my dad can come. Yeah. yeah. Well, so- I was thinking that was because it was Saturday. I knew my dad was free because um, my mum was at a bottomless brunch. I knew my dad was free. I knew he probably, and he loves Warhammer, so he, he'd be up for it. And Claire and I had a free weekend. So I was like, and Claire said recently, because of all this Warhammer talk, that she'd like to go, especially, you know, it's not just for nerds. There's lots it's there. It's not for nerds. There's lots there. Fit is everywhere. Yeah. So... I thought this would be a wonderful little plan. We could have a little, would be. little trip out, all so, of us. So I said, when I picked Little and up from my mum's, I said, hey, Bobby, jokingly, because so my ex-partner, Jasmine, her mum, she's been ripping me about getting into Warhammer. Right, yeah. she, she's turned around to Jobby, and she, she turned around to my Little and she goes, uh, hey, Bobs, you don't have to worry about your dad getting a, uh, about getting a stepmom now. <laughs> we're into Warhammer. <laughs> you fucker. Um, so I'm like, oh, we're going to Warhammer World tomorrow, Bob. And he's like, oh, what's that? So I show her the pictures. And I said, oh, and there's an arcade across the road, so we can do that afterwards. Then you cancel because you're bloody busy. Well, well I, I wasn't, I you wasn't, wasn't busy. Claire and your dad Claire was. and my dad were busy, even though they were free. <sighs> she, I'm not even joking. She was heartbroken. She went, why are we not going to Warhammer World? I said, we can't, darling. I said, um... 
because she thought it was going with you and Max. She went, is Max and Ryan busy? I said, I said, yes, baby, they're busy. She went, I really wanted to go to, and she calls it like more hammer, more, yeah. more mammal. Like, I really Less. want to go to more mammal world. <laughs> yeah. I was like, sorry, mate, no war world today. Feel the disappointment <laughs> that we all feel at war hammer world, Bobby. Yeah, exactly. You're not exempt. <laughs> She was like, oh, when we go, I'm going to buy some. I was like, you're fucking not. Fucking not yeah. <laughs> I don't want enough pocket money for that. Yeah, I don't mind taking you to a toy shop and buying you a five pound toy. There's no five pound toys in Warhammer. Well, five, pound to- <laughs> five pound in Warhammer, you're getting like a bag, a plastic bag to put yeah. your purchases in. <laughs> Yay, do you like your plastic bag, Bob? Let's go and put our heads in it. <laughs> we can't afford to eat anymore. <laughs> we have spoke so much about food. Should we stop and do a snack of the week? Yeah, I'm really hungry. <laughs> we really should. Right. So how do we do this? Don't we need some guy to help us with this? There's a little guy in a box that we get out. Ah, uh, that's it. You've been speaking to a little guy in a box recently, I have, haven't you? I have. He's doing well. Yeah. Did you tell him that we miss him? Yeah, always. Good. Because he's a big part of my Twitch now, Drew Flanagan. Yeah, he's the most popular part of your Twitch. Yeah, people come in my channel all the time, spend the channel points to play Drew yeah. in the background. It's lovely. I like that. So oh, come on, come on out, Drew. Sing us a song, baby. Here come Sam and Ryan, listen to them both speak. They've come through hours all with their pop culture critique. But are you even a nerd if you don't overread? So come on, everybody, it's the snack of the week. So we've bailed on the snack that we chose. We went through the big, massive box of snacks that we have sat here. And yep. we picked something out. But we've just had to change this very last second, mm. haven't we? Because if you remember last week, we had some uh, Leslie's Cheesies. Oh, some God. cheese and jalapeno flavoured crips from the Philippines. Yep. Our good friend Alexis um, gave us them. And there's still two more bags of different flavours in there. And I've been itch, like, itching, itching to like, eat like, these. Yeah. I'm sat, not playing Pal World, yeah. not fucking painting Warhammer, and not eating Cheesies just in a corner. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we're going to go for them instead again. Yeah, let's do it. That's twice. Twice in two weeks you get a shout out, Alexis. Yeah. With this this week, we're going for the spicy chicken <sighs> buffalo wing flavor cheesy corn crunch. Oh, I'm so excited. So yesterday, because I had to wait till 11 o'clock to eat the uh, chili dogs and that, and it's the shop to buy. So I was like, I'll just get a meal deal. And I bought some uh, takis. Oh, yeah. We've had them before, I the purple the takis, yeah. I don't know what was wrong with these ones, mate, but these ones were double spicy. Oh. Fuck me, they were hammering me. It was only a smaller bag. It wasn't like the big one we had. Oh, God, my tongue by the end of it. Spice, mate. Really? The problem is I had this energy drink, and I was like, I'll make this last. Mm. Because I was eating them. Washing it down. While I was playing Power World. I was like necking the energy drink. Yeah. Because I was fucking getting hot mouth, and then the energy drink was gone too quick. That's a shame. It was a shame. Full of energy, though. Oh, God, I was full of energy. Yeah, that's good. Oh, God, I can already feel how coated in fucking... Fucking powder these are. Oh, yes, baby. Oh, my God, they really are. Oh, they're all little. These are smaller than last week. Got bigger than me, and All right. Yeah, okay. Don't sniff it. We know it smells of feet. It does smell of feet. Buffalo spicy chickens. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, they're very feet smelly. <laughs> Let's go. Mm. I'm not getting buffalo wings. I'm not getting buffalo wings. Are you? Spicy chicken wings, sorry. No. I'm not really getting anything. No. They're a bit cheesy. A bit cheesy. A tiny, tiny little... Tiny kick, but you can't taste... You can't taste it. It's just a little, very mild, tingle. mild, t- yeah, mm. kick. Disappointed. I am disappointed. I'm not going to lie. What's the other flavor we've got left? Outrageously cheesy. Yeah. Mm. That's a disappointment. That is a disappointment. Jalapeno ones, and they're all little tiny little nubbins. These ones, yeah, very very powdery, very powdery. But at least with uh, the jalapenos, they were powdery, but that powder was major. Mm, yeah. Um, 
No, no. It's not two for two for the Leslie's cheesy corn crunch. No. Where are we putting them on the triangle of snacks? So what are the choices? So top tier. Um, I love that. I love that. Quite snackable. If I have to. And the fifth one, shit. Yeah, dog shit. Um, I'll say if I have to. They are very if I have to, aren't they? Yeah, they're 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 fourth. If you put them out with a load of other crisps, they'd be well down the pecking order. Yeah, they would. Yeah. I mean, the Moorish. Yeah, because of crunch and well, again, easy tweet, but it's because I if I have to. Yeah, but so are Twiglets and Twiglets are shit. Yeah, it's just because they're there. If it was between that and something else that we had access to right now. That's a, that's a four for me, if I have it's to. It's a four for me, I agree. And to say, the other ones, the jalapeno ones, were, were top, top tier. tier. For the same thing, just a slightly different flavour. Just a different flavouring. Oh, that's a shame. I'm upset with that. Yeah. Sorry, Alexis, you're out. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll, we'll see. Oh, yeah. Be- two out of three. Mm. Well, we may as well do that next week, then. Yeah, okay. And it could be Battle of the Leslies. Battle of the Leslies. <laughs> <laughs> the Leslie Trilogy. <laughs> Oh, oh, well, very disappointed with them. Yeah, never mind. There's always next week. <laughs> I'll finish them later. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Right. Into the bulk of the episode. Um, we don't really talk about horror films that much, do we? Um, we don't really watch a lot of horror, but this week... Not really. Well, the last couple of weeks, we've seemed to have watched a lot of horror between us, haven't we? Mm. You're going down a bit of a gothic hammer horror I am at the moment. Talk, am. talk us through that. Why? In fact, t- tell tell us what Hammer Horror is. I guess. Great, great question. So Hammer Horror was a so Hammer was a British film studio. Mm-hmm. It, correct me if I'm wrong. British film production, film production, and they became famous during like the 50s, 60s, and 70s for pro- mass producing lots of um, low budget gothic horror films and it became like a bit of a film movement didn't it yeah and it was like it's very big and lots of the people very famous associated with that like the, the big two really being christopher lee and peter cushing the two mm-hmm. actors that really were at the forefront of that and yeah so that's what hammer horror is in a lot of ways it's b b, b movie horrors yeah like classic classic ones the original b like, movie yeah 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 and it, i think it was a lot of the stories that they told had been told before, but they were reimagining versions because obviously the original ones, like your Frankenstein and Dracula and stuff, were done in like, I want to say like the 20s and 30s, you know, like your Bella Lugosi and people like that. Where, so this was like a, a retelling of that. They weren't just saying the same story, because especially because Universal had the rights to those and they th- threatened to, you know, sue the British hammer if they copied it so yeah, they're yeah, like yeah. slightly different takes on it all um getting weirder and weirder wonderful like and loads of sequels like i think christopher lee played dracula like seven or eight times and mm-hmm. peter cushion played frankenstein like seven or eight times as well so they really churn, churn them out some of them are absolute classics some of the best horror movies going in my opinion because i love gothic horror some of them are dross um and I went on a bit of a Hammer Horror binge a few years ago. And I, I, by binge, I mean I really sort of scratched the surface. You know, I watched like The Mummy, which is one of the famous ones, Peter Cushion and Christopher Lee, um, The Curse of Frankenstein. Yeah. Which was like the first one. I think The Curse of Frankenstein was the first one they did, like 1957. Yeah. And that sort of kicked it off. And that was Peter Cushion's first film with Hammer. And it obviously went on to become a legend of Hammer. I watched like the Abominable Snowman and stuff, but I I only, yeah, like I said, I only really scratched the surface with that. And it's been something I've been wanting to get back to for a long, long, long time. The problem with it, a lot of it is getting hold of them is so difficult. Oh, big time. They're really hard to find. Like they're not on any streaming sites. Um, I don't have a dodgy stick, unfortunately, but even then I would be shocked if, a lot of them were on the dodgy sticks because they're quite obscure, a lot of them, or the, certainly the quality of them won't, won't be great. So suddenly then you're looking at, even getting them on DVD, some of them are hard, and they're like, really like 15, 20 quid for like an old DVD mm. of one of these films. Well, you can pick up the um, 
Hammer Horror Collection for about 2025. And yeah. that's normally got about eight or nine of them. Yeah. You know, your big ones, Curse of Frankenstein, but they don't, um, a few of Dracula's, <laughs> She, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, and a lot of... But the thing is, it, there's no, like... There isn't like one collection to rule them all, if you no, know what no, I mean. Because no. we saw a collection the other day, didn't we? It was like 21 horror films. Yeah. In, it was like for 44 quid. That's pretty good. Um, but it hasn't got all the classics on there. So I don't think like the first Dracula is on there. There's probably a couple of the Dracula films. Yes. Yeah, but not they're not in order. It's just like <clears> random, <throat> like higgledy piggledy groupings. So that's why I've I've never really done a proper deep dive into it. And I thought, you know what? I really want to get into it. So I'm a massive, massive Christopher Lee fan. And, you know, I discovered Christopher Lee, like a lot of people in my generation, probably from him playing Saruman in Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And then Count Dooku in Star Wars. And he had like a massive revival in like the like the 2000s. You know, he was in like loads of Tim Burton films. But, you know, he's actually a horror and film legend. Aficionado. Yeah. Um, again, pe- most people will know Peter Cushing as playing Grand Moff Tarkin in Star Wars. Yeah. Rather than thinking, actually, it's a guy who's got a huge fucking resume. So anyway, I've, I've decided I want to go a bit on, a bit on on that binge. So yeah, that's mm. what I've been doing. What, what do you think of Hammer Horror? <clears throat> so I've not actually seen a lot of them. Mm, um, me neither. I've, I've only seen a few, and like say, like the classic Dracula and Curse of Frankenstein. But these were all a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure I owned one of them DVDs that had like ten of them on there. Right. But we're talking when I was 16, 18, maybe, when I was first, first really getting into horror. Yeah. Um, so I don't remember a lot of them. So I'm kind of with you. I want to go back and watch a lot of them now. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I know Hammer still churn out the odd. They've come back and started making films again, I think, in yeah. the, last, sort of like the last 10 years. I think The Woman in Black was Hammer, you know. Uh, really? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I'm I sure see that. it was. Um, but yeah, so it'll be really interesting. So, so what have you watched? So this weekend, I I watched... The original Dracula, so the first one, which I'd never <clears> seen before. So that is Christopher Lee playing Dracula for the first time, 1958, I think mm-hmm, it is. Correct. And Peter Cushing, because they were like on-screen rivals, you know, best friends in real life, but like a lot of the time they were like the opposing people. So you got Christopher Lee as, the, as Dracula and Peter Cushing as Van Helsing. Yeah. And again, it's a bit of a different take on Dracula. It's not just a... The, they're not just telling the same story that from the book and they're not just replicating the universal one. This is the first time I think this film's sort of quite famous for making Dracula sort of like a sex symbol. Uh-huh. So, you know, he was sort of like, it's all about a bit more seduction and like he's like seducing the, these women and he's like, you know, this tall, dark, handsome man rather than being like a, creepy vampire yeah 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 and i've seen it i think it's a fake bit of trivia but it's because it's since been disproved but it's one of the first time ever as well you see vampires with these the fangs oh really yeah yeah one of the first times you see that um so again i'd never seen this i I knew what to expect from because like the hammer you know it's going to be like cheap productions like cheap sets and stuff but still really works because what makes it great is people like peter cushing and christopher lee who are great actors don't like especially peter cushing doesn't act all hammy he yeah, acts yeah, like yeah. it's like a it's like he, he acts like he's in a shakespeare play yeah yeah yeah. Um, so it makes it believable but i really really enjoyed that one again they're not scary they're not scary horror because as a they're really old you know B, they're not gory as well because of the de- the age of them, but it's just the atmosphere. I love the gothic side and like the set. So, have you seen the this Dracula years ago? Yeah. So, again, it's re- a reimagining. Like they don't go to England and stuff, and like Jonathan Harker is it who turns up at the start? He's like not like actually like the estate agent that comes to sell it. He's actually trying to hunt down Dracula. It's all like so. It's like it's. They're all unique stories. So even if you know the story of these classics, you can still watch them for something a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely love that. Really, really good. Definitely hold, still holds up now. It's in colour as well, which is okay. quite nice. For, say, it's, what, 1958 mm-hmm. in colour. Looks quite good. Um, we just got it off of Prime, like, just paid for it. It was, like, a fiver or something. Oh, so, like, bad, it's quite, it? like, the picture quality is really good. Um 
Yeah, I would definitely recommend that. But that was sort of the one that put Christopher Lee on the map a little bit and obviously started their real relationship. I think they'd been in Curse of Frankenstein before that, which was 1957, which I also rewatched this weekend. Yeah. So I had seen that one before. So that's the first one. Again, quite a, a little bit similar to the original story, you know, Baron Victor Frankenstein, you know, is a scientist. He's, help, he's a, you know, obsessed with be, bringing people back from the dead. He starts off by bringing a puppy back from the dead. And then he goes on like a rampage and, not a, well, it turns into a bit of a rampage because an obsession, he's, he gets like a dead body from like a gibbet that's hanging and he takes it back like grave robbing and then slowly starts making his creature and his, and his, his monster. Because everyone always thinks Frankenstein is the monster, but it's not. It's cause not. He's just the monster. Frankenstein is the guy that made him. Victor. Victor Frankenstein. So it's Frankenstein's monster. Yeah. Um. Again, great. Christopher Lee is... He's just the monster. So, he, you know, although we know Chris <clears throat> Lee is this quite suave, you know, British actor that can really, like, hold his own incredible voice, he has no lines. He's no, literally no, no. just in oh. it. He's full of makeup. He literally got hired because he was, like, six foot four or something. Yeah, yeah, And he's, yeah, like, yeah. a big guy. <laughs> so that's it. So it's just quite... It's so interesting to see, like, these actors that I've always grown up with as kids in the like, incredible roles in, like, Star Wars and Lord of the Rings, like, the biggest franchise of all time. To see him, even, like, mid-30s, because he got into acting quite late, Christopher Lee, literally just playing a monster. It's mad, isn't it? You know, he's in The Mummy as well. I haven't rewatched really that recently, but he's, again, he just plays The the Mummy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> You're like, behind bandages. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what I, I'd watch that one, and then... I watched a new one that I hadn't seen before, which is a bit of a later one. It's called Horror Express. Okay. Which is 1971 or something, I think. So a lot later, um, pretty much coming to the end of their, of like Hammer's heyday and Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing both in that. This time they're both the protagonists, which was quite nice. Okay. So the premise of this one, um, Christopher Lee is a, like a scientist, a doctor who finds this two million old ape frozen in the Arctic or wherever he is in Russia or Siberia or somewhere. And he excavates it with his team and puts it in a box and is trying to get it back on a train back to, you know, wherever to do experiments on it. But people keep mysteriously dying near it. And Peter Cushing's also on there. He's a bit of like his rival, another doctor and stuff. So, but, Basically, like the monster comes to life because it thaws out. You see, because it comes out of the out of the ice, so it thaws out, and then it gets a bit weird. It basically turns into the thing. So, have you ever oh, seen right. the thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of so, course. like, suddenly, like the monster gets killed, but it's transferred its spirit or its essence into one of the passengers, who's then killing people. And they're like, we don't know who it is. Any one of us could be the monster. And like. <laughs> You know, we have to test that look in their eyes to see who's... And literally, I was like, oh my God, this is just the thing. <laughs> but on a train with Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. <laughs> Outstanding. Like, this is before The Thing came out, but obviously The Thing was based on... An, I don't know, an alien from another planet or something like that. Yeah, it's it? yeah, yeah, it? yeah, and it's based on a book. But I really enjoyed that again. B-movie horror. Proper B-movie horror film. No, what more could you want? Oh, God, Peter yeah. Cushing and Christopher Lee teaming up as well. To take on the on the monster, to take on the thing, yeah, take on the thing. So, yeah, that was really cool. Nice to watch one that I'd not seen before and had no idea about. You know what I mean? This is a totally like random one, like off the cuff. It's not like Dracula. Okay, I hadn't seen that before and I loved it, but we know Dracula. We know what Dracula is, and I suppose that that's the thing, isn't it? With the Hammer horror films, I mean, they cover they cover all of your retro, yeah, like monsters. So, like you say. <clears throat> your vampires, your Draculas, your Frankenstein, your werewolves. Yeah, we, yeah, they literally um, do it all. What we got here? When dinosaurs ruled the earth, Rasputin, the Mad Monk. Yeah. Um, Phantom of the Opera, the Reptile, uh, the Plague of Zombies. So it's just it, it covers everything. It covers, it covers you can everything. And Hound it, of the Baskervilles. Yeah. yeah. It just t- touches everything you like about them old school monsters. Yeah. And. They just make four or five films, like low budget films on them, which exactly. is outstanding. And, and, and I love that, and especially when you've got people like uh, Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee with their sort of magnitude. You know, they're they're sort of like 
charisma they can pull it off and it makes you want to watch them even though you're basically watching b-movie horrors yeah yeah yeah. they're a bit naff but because you're watching them you're like oh my god i love these guys yeah. i can watch them in anything that's those sort of actors and i love that you know when you get an actor like it don't matter what the film is i'm just watching it because they're in it yeah and, of and course. i love them so yeah i'm excited for that i'm like that's going to be hopefully a journey that i continue this year because like last year i had a couple of different themes like i had a bit like the old school japanese films that i was watching like the 50s the akira kurosawa stuff and i watched a fuck ton of nicholas cage films last year so it's nice to this year to try and deep dive properly into another epic part of cinema history yeah of course which, like i did yeah, last yeah. year so i'm excited for that and i think you said as well you'd quite like to jump in on them as oh, well definitely. like me and horror mate yeah. you and horror go hand in hand and again like i said having not seen loads of them it'd be nice to tick them off the list yeah so. definitely so I'll tell you what let's end the episode then with um one that we both watched together yeah another classic horror what year are we talking 73 73 was it? i think 73 so we are talking the original wicker man oh yes so this is something uh, Jess, your sister bought you it for Christmas. You asked for it for Christmas. Yeah, it's been on my watch list for ages. Again, like like I said, I've been a big Christopher Lee fan for a long time, and a lot of like articles I'd seen and reviews I'd say, uh, I've seen all say like his greatest film ever is The Wicker Man, and I'd never seen it, so it'd been on my watch list for ages. And just like all these old school horror films, you can't get hold of it. No, even no, getting on, on on DVD and Blu-ray, I managed to find a Blu-ray copy that. I asked my sister to get me for Christmas, but it's like a German copy. Oh yeah, yeah. Because you have to change the and you just have to change audio. the language. Yeah. Um. But yeah, they're just hard to get hold of. And then I watched it, and I was like, Sam, have you seen this film? And you said you had, but not for a very, very long time. You couldn't really remember it. Because I, I was like, this has your name written all over it. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Not only is it a horror film, but cult, yep. cult horror film, and it's just weird and mad as fuck. Yeah, so, so like, I've been chatting for ages. So you t- you you talk <coughs> us through it. What do you think of it? Yeah, oh, I absolutely love it. So I, most people that are into horror, or especially the, the sort of classic, it, you, you know the story of Wicker Man. So the story of Wicker Man is so this one's Edward Woodward plays. It's all set on a little island off the coast of Scotland, mm-hmm. and a Highland mainland cop goes to this little island uh, investigating the disappearance of a young girl. Yep. Um. Stays on there for a few days whilst investigating, starts talking to the townsfolk, and everyone is just fucking weird. Weird, and, aren't and they? And they're like, I don't believe people. They're all lying to me. And he stays in this pub, and he feel, he's like a real Christian man, like real devout yes. Christian. Yeah, yeah. And the, all these people seem to be pagans. Yeah, because there's he, loads of weird like rituals going on. Mm-hmm. And like, he walks out of the pub at one point, and loads of people just, just having sex and, on the field. And he's like, like it's like a mass orgy. He's like what the hell's going on? And everyone's just weird and keep bursting into song. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> the music in this, I mean, the next day I saw, so I watched it. And then the next day I came to work and shared an office with you. And I just had the, the uh, soundtrack, the soundtrack on. on in the background, but the songs are weird. It's old folk. Oh, like really weird old folk. Yeah. So the kind as the storyline progresses, it's all about the two extremes of the two religions. Yeah. The extreme pagan, um, of everyone on this, island and then the extreme christianity of edward woodward's character um it's just so 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 good like you say that that scene before he goes outside and sees everyone shagging he get, first goes into this pub where he's going to be staying and the landlord says oh my daughter will show you to the room and the daughter comes down and she's this gorgeous blonde oh yeah and everyone in this bar just starts singing this folk song about shagging the landlord's daughter yeah and he gets really uncomfortable and he like puts a stop to it and he's like i'm here to investigate the disappearance of this girl who's seen him and as it goes on people get weirder the lies become more extravagant he starts getting lost in this world in this um investigation it is so 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 good yeah christopher is. lee is unreal in it he plays like he's lord summer <clears throat> I- summer's isle summer isle yeah some, some i think it's lord summer isle yeah so his great great granddad bought the island years ago yeah and uh he is the lord of this island now he is incredible in it and it's all <sighs> coming down to this mayday parade yes like it's all this big lead up to this mayday parade where like this pagan festival is going to happen and that's like the big, big end part. Yeah. Um, I won't go into it any more than that. 
it is just unreal. The music, the scene, there's boobies everywhere, mate. There is a lot of boobies. The landlord's daughter, some, oh, what's her name? Something Eckers, isn't it? Um, uh, was it like Bridget? Uh, Bridget, I think it might be Bridget Eckers or Brittany Eckers, one of them. She's absolutely gorgeous. She gets boobs out so much. She doesn't care. Um, she's like, she's like a bit of a femme fatale kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. She's trying to woo this Christian engaged copper into laying in her bed with her to it, to corrupt his mind and all this sort of shit. It's it's so 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 good. It is so good. She is Brit Eckland. Eckland, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Oh, it's just so good. I love it because it's so weird. And I, I, what I love about it as well is it's so British. So British. Like, you know, like the way it is like going into the pub and all the landmarks and the manner mannerisms and like, you know, he's a proper stereotypical, almost like stuck up British. I know it's all, they're all Scotland, so uh, Scottish will hate me for saying British. But you know what I mean? Like they're all, he's like, yeah, he's rigid, but he got all this like, but Britain's full of all this pagan history as well. So it's like oh, you yeah. said, it's all about them coming to a head and the two extremes. And Christopher Lee is incredible in this because he's the sort of one that's really pushing like the pagan world. It sort of all it stems from him, doesn't it? For, like comes from the top down. And, you know, when he's doing like the parade stuff, I couldn't believe it was him. I was oh, like, oh my man, God, is it? that Christopher Lee? Like wearing a giant like long wig and a dress and just like dancing around. Like, yeah. It's a whole other side to him I'd never seen and plays it really well. Like, and yeah, like I said, I think, you know, we don't want to talk about the, the final act, but the whole, that it was shocking. It was really, really shocking. I did not expect the ending yeah, cause completely. I, Cause I've seen it before and I've seen the remake with, um, Nicholas Cage, Nick Cage. Obviously I, kn- I know how it ends. I, I've seen, I've seen the ending several times. So when you was like, I was so shocked. I forget that people haven't seen this before. And actually, yeah. it is really a shocking ending. Like, yeah. If you know nothing about the tale of the Wicker Man, then yeah, it kind of would be. You wouldn't expect it to end in the way. It yeah, ends. exactly. Because I knew I knew what the Wicker Man was, but I didn't expect everything to f- happen the way it does, and it be so sinister. Um, and it just ends. Mm. And like, I'm not gonna yeah, not gonna spoil it, but. I really want people to rewatch it to watch this film because it's one good that it's, like, it. it's, it's a hidden gem. Yeah, good luck finding it. But if you do watch it, because it is incredible, um, <clears throat> and I think it's like been an inspiration for a lot of people, like filmmakers in the film world. Hot Fuzz is completely ripped off of this film. A hundred percent. The idea of a policeman getting sent to like a rural village town where they're all like there's weird goings on and like disappearances and he's looking into it as like a normal person but everyone's just weird and it's building up to this in like hot fuzz it's obviously the um greatest village award of the yeah, year yeah, award yeah. or whatever and like this whole cult undertone and you just can see why because why edgar wright just went what a great film the wicker man is i'm gonna do like my own homage to that yeah, in, like, oh, yeah, this yeah, yeah. fucking comedy action film Oh yeah, I'm glad you. I'm glad you like. I knew you would. I knew. I, I knew you said you'd seen it before, but I knew you'd fucking love it because it's just so weird. I'll re, I want to rewatch it. That's oh, where I'm at. Like I, 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 I could have put it on the next day just to try and unpick it again. And the good thing is because it's been so long since I've watched it, a lot of it I forgot about. Yeah. So I mean, I'm terror. I can watch film and forget. You know, on a Friday and forget it by the Monday. So there's so much of this film. There's certain scenes that I remember. Um, yeah. Like the ending, how he become how he realises he's been duped and fucked over. Like, I remember all that yeah, in the very yeah. end scene, but a lot of it I didn't remember. Yeah. So it was so good to go back and watch. And it, like, like I say, a film from 73 as well. Mm. Like this, it, it withstands the hands of time every day. Of the Absolutely. Week. It's, it's unreal. And yeah. Edward Woodward, who's the policeman, is fantastic in it. He's he, so good. He plays it so well. Um, I feel like everyone does. Everyone plays their part. I, yeah. Loved it. I can't wait to watch it again. Especially Brett Eklund. Yeah. Especially her. Yeah. N- not her for the uh, fully nude scene, though. No. Uh, it's in the trivia. She refused to get a bottom oh, out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said so she, she so they had to get a local stripper to do that scene, and then she wasn't happy about it because apparently she had a big bottom. She had a lovely bottom. She had a lovely bottom. I don't know why she was complaining No, about. no, no. I mean, should have got your own bottom out then, shouldn't you? 
if you're going to moan about it. Yeah. But yeah, lovely scene, that one. That was. Although yeah. it, may, it makes you realise how unrealistic that film is because you're just like, that, that, there's no way that cop <laughs> would have been like, no thanks. Yeah. Which she's singing, she's just singing this, it's such a weird scene as well. Like, it's but so it, weird. But it fits the film so beautifully. She's bollock naked, doing this really weird dance, this real weird culty dance. And it, yeah. all, all limbs, limbs are floating everywhere. And every time she sort of bends down, you can see crevices you shouldn't be seeing yeah and, and she's just singing pressed up against this wall wall well, and he's on the <coughs> other side sweating, sweating and trying up to resist going into going into the bedroom she's like her. a siren isn't she but that's it's exactly it. she call. is a yeah. siren yeah you're totally right that's a great way of saying it it's like a siren call yeah and uh oh, it's just such a good scene but and when you kind of describe it if i was to show someone that scene out of context they'd be like what the fuck have you watched yeah but yeah. within context of the film and within the, the sort of pagan cult sort of background it fits and it's perfect and you yeah. w- you wouldn't expect anything else other than that no exactly like there's one scene isn't there where the police where policeman edward woodward goes to visit lord is it lord is it so lord summer it's isle summer it's gonna, or it's gonna, or it's gonna it? annoy me that um yeah lord summer isle and there's just a load of women doing like a pagan dance completely naked jumping over a fire and you know the policeman he walks in his first thing he says is to the lord he's like there's a load of naked women outside jumping over a fire. He's like, and he's just, he's just like a deadpan response is, well, of course they're not wearing any clothes because it'd be dangerous otherwise. They're jumping <laughs> over a fire. Like, <laughs> like as if he's the weird one for yeah, exactly, saying yeah. like, why are the naked women jumping yeah, over like, a fire? These children, they're dancing oh, naked. They're the are children. you making them dance naked? Well, of course they're dancing naked. <laughs> yeah, of course they're dancing naked. It'd be dangerous if they was wearing clothes. <laughs> uh, yeah, fair point. All right. <laughs> but as soon as he says it, you're like, that is a really good point. It would be dangerous if they're going to jump under a fire wearing fucking a long oodie. A long, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, fantastic. Yeah. Um, anything else on that before we wrap up? Uh, no, you know what? I could talk loads about it, but... I- there's probably loads we've missed, but again, I've only seen it the once and there's so much to take in. I was just sort of <laughs> in shock about the whole thing. So just definitely watch the Wicker Man, the original version, 1973, Christopher Lee, Edward Woodward. Incredible. One of, is a lot of, it tops a lot of the polls for like greatest British film or greatest British horror film, certainly, or has done. It's definitely in the top. Um, it's a cult classic. Definitely. So can I give you, maybe not ne- next week, but within the next couple of weeks, can I give you a film to watch, try get watched? Absolutely. Midsummer. Oh, yeah, I really, really want to watch Midsummer. So it's actually on all four at the moment. Nice. Um, <clears throat> so you can watch it on that. Same sort of vibe. A cult film, a horror film set in such a bright, beautiful, colourful backdrop, yeah. which you don't expect from a horror. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's what you kind of get with The Wicker Man, isn't it? That's it's, exactly like, what it you know, is. It's not like dark and creepy. Everything's bright and every, all the village, villages are all really happy and like creepily so. You know, yeah. it's not, there's no like jump scares or anything like that. It's just that eerie, uncomfortable feeling that you get throughout. Like, what the hell's going on here? Absolutely. So, and it's the same sort of vibe. They're all setting up for the Festival of Midsummer. So, yeah. Um, yeah, if you get to watch in the next few weeks, let, let me know when yeah. you're going to watch it because I've seen the film two or three times, but I'll rewatch it with you just because I love it. Yeah, sounds good. Florence we can do Pugh. a bit of a deep dive into Midsummer. Yeah, definitely. There's a few films that I watched this month, but I'll save them for another time because just, just they were just standard um, horrors. Yeah. Um, so, is there anything you'd like to add? You can give us some words of love, I guess. Um, words of love. Um, if you're going to jump over a fire probably best to do it naked for your own safety it'd be dangerous otherwise it would peace